Well, Rennie Collection's kind of known worldwide. I mean, works from the Rennie Collection have been in almost every major museum you can name. <laughs> MoMA, Met, uh, MoCA, Pompidou, Tate. The Rennie Collection is, is so broad, so specific in certain artists that there are certain shows you can't do without works from this collection. Art is meant to be seen in different contexts, in different shows. It also is really great for the artist to have their work exhibited in different ways. There is an awareness on our end to make those works also equally available to smaller regional institutions. When Dahl test, they ran a test sitting a black student at a desk and saying, which one would you choose, a white doll or a black doll? And an overwhelming number chose the white doll. That goes right back to Carrie James Marshall. You go into a museum, you don't see a black figure, you think it doesn't belong. All of these have little threads together. What does collecting mean? And it means exposing and raising artists' voices. How can we raise artists' voices? And how can we, how can we bring Palestinian artists together with Colombian artists? Nothing comes into the collection that doesn't speak to the collection. This is Titus Kufur. It is a painting of three women, Sandra Bland, Renisha McBride, and Tanisha Anderson. Women who are basically marginalized and categorized as the same person, and Titus painted them all over top of each other. Colleen Smith did this neon piece that we've got them talking to each other. The neon piece says, I will light you up. And then also, I will light up your life. Sandra Bland, the policeman, pointed a taser at her and said, I will light you up. The way Titus captured three different lives when you see the three stories together, there's a really, really ugly thread. They all died because they were black women. The vision has always been to have courage, to commit to what you really see and believe in. At times doing so when I think the rest of the art world didn't share that vision. He's really looking to engage with the contemporary makers of our time rooted in a very deep and thoughtful art historical way. He's thinking about the artists that are not only creating um, work, but also doing something um, that I think is important for sort of the contemporary times, right? Whether that has to do with politics or social engagement, religion, all of these things. Almost everything here has a story. To mark something about human history, civilization, a story, a change in our culture that needed to be depicted. O oh, Freedom, 1956, Charles White, hands spread. Carrie James Marshall's mentor is Charles White. So I needed, I wanted that conversation in the collection. O oh, Freedom had been stored at a home for 60 years and hadn't seen the light of day. And me and Bob talked prior to him acquiring the work and then celebrating after he acquired the work over the phone, which was fantastic. What a better place for it to be housed. That drawing from 1956 was used in 1960 for the Martin Luther King March with John F. Kennedy in Los Angeles. Otis College in California has a Charles White bursary, and they asked to use that image on all the billboards. There's that pride of doing things on the journey. They tell the story very well. This artist is Bula Bezwe Siwani. She's uh, South African. She really is exploring the relationship with ancestral ritual and our modern life. Mombatheseni is a wall covered with wool ropes. These ropes were actually manually woven by the artist herself. For her, sort of a meditative process that really contrasts with the push for productivity and the sort of mechanical reproduction that is so much infiltrates our contemporary lives. 
This is work by Lauren Halsey. She's a really phenomenal young artist, born and raised in Los Angeles in South Central. The work that Lauren is doing is really about the intersection of art, architecture, and community and civic engagement. These iconic signs that have a very sort of colloquial nature to them, the typography of these works, uh, the graphic nature of them, create these really beautiful light boxes, allows for a different conversation to be had about what's happening in these neighborhoods, but also looking at um, the artistic creativity and, and beauty behind a lot of these signs. 2009, when we opened, we opened it to the public for free, and we were doing two or three shows a year. The, the building is the oldest structure in Vancouver's Chinatown. What is our responsibility to social justice? We started talking and the government said that they would participate. And so we agreed to sell it to the Chinese Canadian Museum. Next September, they will honor the 100th anniversary of the Chinese Exclusion Act. Between 1923 and 1947, only 50 Chinese citizens were allowed immigration into Canada. But I think there'll be some tears shed when we have a family dinner here. It's just been an amazing journey that very few would be allowed to go on. Well, I think he's really straightforward. I think he takes the work very seriously uh, without taking himself too seriously. And he's quite fun. He's really funny. We've had a great time.